Yo. Yo. What's going on, B? How you feeling, man? I'm great. I'm great now that you're here, man. Yeah, we're here. Are you sufficiently stoned enough? Oh, yeah. I need that? an espresso, but can we lower this? Because I don't f with this height of the chair. <laughs> it's like yeah, a three quarter nice. chair. I don't like that. You approve, though. The espresso is all right. It's really good. The taste of vanilla. That's what, that's what I chose for you. You chose the vanilla one? I did. I usually wouldn't go for it, but man, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A wow from you yeah. means a lot to me. Not that I should take credit for whatever Nespresso Tahitian. pod. Tahitian. Tahitian. That's your, that's your usual Well, no, I feel like you, you deep potted it and then just laid all the, the bean in there for me. That's exactly what I did. Thank you for noticing. Wow. There are some things in the city of New York that feel extraordinarily New York. And as a New York show, Pablo Torre finds out that feels the need to occasionally remind people that, yes, we have a physical studio in Manhattan where we tape our show. I marvel at a person like Action Bronson, who is uh, oozing New York out of every pore and who is a rapper and an artist and a chef and a 30-something, I believe 39-year-old, native New Yorker and a host of F*** That's Delicious, a wildly popular show about food. He's a renaissance man in a way that is entirely sincere. And so when I saw him on the sidewalk on one of my uh, many almost entirely random walks through the city, I realized that I had many, many questions that I needed to ask him. What I wasn't sure was whether his particular um, strain of consciousness would indulge the many questions that I had for him. I knew this was going to be different. And so I just needed to tell him how I felt. I am so glad that you're sitting here. No, oh, thank you. For real. Like, I, I was trying to... We were trying to figure out, like, how do we explain to someone who hasn't listened to your music... Action Bronson before. And we had a couple of like, well, first off, what do you, when you imagine a listener and appreciator of your music doing when they're listening to you, what do you imagine? I don't really give a shit, to be honest with you. Like, I'm just doing it for myself. I'm not even thinking about like anything else but new things. I'm just in that, like, I've just come back from a new path. I'm riding a new path. I feel great. Um, it's hard to describe anything. I don't, it's like, but if, you're, I, but if you're... I wanted to describe it, I would have talked to you about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if he, it's like when you paint, I didn't want to fucking talk to you. I painted you something and that's that. Right now, we're in the process of making new music, new breakthroughs. So then I'll be excited. Having a brand new band and doing things like that, like like the Tiny Desk and shit like that, you know, like... That's the shit, though, that I've been listening to all week. That. You motherfuckers are crazy, man. Oh, my God. I'm sorry for cursing. It's, it's like one of those, those platforms when you're respected in music, they bring you on there and... I don't know, people seem to really enjoy it. Ten time champ, it's about to be eleven. Just understand that I would die for this leather belt, man. Live from the moon. I just want to say this very clearly, if you have not listened or learned much about Action Bronson before this interview somehow. This tiny desk concert at NPR in DC. Yeah. Yo. Nadir behind the glass, one of my guys, we were trying to figure out how do we describe this music, and he was like this music makes me want to ride a horse. Mm, yes. My third eye been popping for 8,000 years. I don't got no tears. I don't got no fears. I don't get caught up in the bright lights, dear. It brings out all the emotions of carnal desires. 
Yes. Riding horses on beaches naked. Just things of that nature like fire. Just watching fire burn. Watching the ocean roar. Boys stay cozy. Laying in a bed that's full of roses. Sipping rosy. Chilling with some Kobe's on. Go rolly on a phony arm. I travel the stars like Obi-Wan. But f*** Star Wars, man. Cause Indiana Jones is better, bitch. That's it. F*** that. Free flow in the acid jazz. F***ing. I'm a jazz instrument. Just like a goddamn saxophone or the Rhodes. I am, you know? Make me cry. So it's definitely reinvigorated me in that manner, but it's, I have to put myself in a hole to dig myself out right now. That's the zone. So the zone sounds a little miserable if you're using a hole to describe it. No, nah, not really. It's all, it's all, these are all like, I'm, I'm dramatic. I'm being dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> It's all dramatization. I like how you said earlier, I'm not good at describing things. And I'm like, <laughs> you, I think, are one of the best describers of things. It's, but no, going. it's not. Because it's not, I'm not trying, I'm not describing it exact. It's a rendition of my exact brain. This is like, it's like the picture behind you. That's yes. what's happening. I want to say, people have questions like, how do I book this show? I literally ran into you on the street one day. Do you remember this? I don't even know if you remember this. On the street, like in Soho. Mm -hmm. I ran into you. I think we were both varying levels of stoned, incidentally. Yeah, listen, I love the round the horn. That's how you booked this. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, 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 I saw you then, I see you now, and it's kind of a fall day in New York, and I guess I should ask, like, when was the last time you wore pants? I don't, probably 15 to 20 years. The last <laughs> time I put pants on, I had an accident, and... I never wore them again. What happened? Just wasn't good. It just wasn't good. It can't be discussed. <laughs> it can't be discussed. But what I will say that they were never to be touched on my skin again. Every time I've ever seen you, you're wearing it's shorts. Short. And they're stretchy so I could squat. So I could work out. I'm not f***ing around with stiff shorts. You understand? I'm over here flexible. When did you learn that you needed to have stretchy shorts? I was a husky child. Everyone needs stretchy shorts. I don't think that anyone should wear a constricting situation. Anything constricting is like, I get, like, sometimes you get that heat flash that comes over you and you just want to rip everything off. Just rip the shirt off. I get that a lot. So... For me, for me to be able to use the actual agility that I was given by nature and science with, you know, my body construction, it's only right that I put on a material that reflects and echoes all of the property. <laughs> you know? I feel like when you were a kid, though, what was that like? What, what's young Action Bronson like? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, like a f***ing wild man. Every, every kid's crazy, I feel, in some aspect. You're not even fully conscious, you know? You're just kind of like drunk. You're kind of like on ass. You don't know what the f*** is really going on. You're so, like, little Bambi-ish, you know? So you're just running amok, doing whatever thinking that there's no consequence on earth. And then, I don't know, one day it just all hits you. You're old and gray. Your balls sag, you know. Your ass leaks. Not talking about me, but in general. <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> I feel like as I get older, I get more sophisticated looking like Sean Connery. The gravitas is is all over your beard now. It's, it, it's happening. It's happening. When you're a kid and uh, someone picks a fight with you, what's the move? Headbutt. Mm. I'm a headbutter. 
when did you discover that that was your move? That's like a that's like a Zangief move. It's like this. You ever watch the movie Gladiator? Of course. But with Brian Dennehy, that one. No. Cuba Gooding Jr. It was an early underground fighting movie, boxing, and he used to say this was the hardest part of the head. Come on, the top of the head, kid. Hardest part of the body. It hurts, don't it, huh? What are you gonna do now, huh? What are you gonna do now? Here he comes. Here he comes. You never fucking seen Gladiator with Brian Dennehy? <laughs> you kidding me right now? I have this on VHS. Cuba Gooding Jr. Do you know that actor? Of course. You might have heard of him. I wish someone had shown me <laughs> the VHS tape of Gladiator starring Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. It was starring Brian Dennehy. Sorry. Cuba Gooding Jr. had the supporting role. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, had, I had a grandfather, a very good man, who loved his VHSs, and that's what he collected, and I have about 3,000 in my house. Holy shit. Yeah, that he left me all kinds of crazy shit. I've seen it all. I've seen them all. What's better about a VHS? This grain. Everything is better about tape. There's some graininess. You have to be a connoisseur to understand it. It's like the in-between space. The imperfection of it. It's that, but it also adds. It gives comfort and warmth in some aspects. Film is just captured different, differently than digital. You know, it's like, whatever. Anyone can pick the camera up and make the thing, you know? I should point out that you have acted for Martin Scorsese when you talk about <laughs> film. Unf yes, I've, I'm accredited as a film actor in the Guild. That's right. I mean, I you, you were in The Irishman. It's pretty f***ing bizarre. Can you explain what meeting Martin Scorsese and being directed by Martin Scorsese was like? Most of the time, people are as stoked as... You are to meet them as they are to meet you. So when they he was a, he was a fan of yours. Well, I don't know if that's the case, but he definitely showed enthusiasm and uh, showed a lot of love and was nothing but happiness and laughter. And you know, we had a good time. It was on. We only did about three takes, and that was it. What was the role you played for people who are unfamiliar? I just some weird like casket salesman. In about the third hour, ten minute mark, <laughs> <laughs> it was a pivotal point. They're like the Cadillacs of caskets. Now, if we're putting you in the oven, it really doesn't matter what you go in. The cheapest shit possible. Particle board. That's it. What are we doing today? Are we doing a cremation? I remember distinctly waking up on my couch to the third hour thereabout mark and thinking to myself, am I hallucinating Action Bronson into this film? With that beard, it was bizarre. He asked me to take the beard off, but I, you know, at that point I was like, man, this is like, I have like six chins under here, <laughs> so I'm probably not. I'm imagining, I'm imagining your home and I'm imagining the 3000 VHS tapes. I'm imagining your incredibly worn down rewinder. You already know there was a rewinder. There has of to course. be. There's no, there's no, you can't put your machine through that type of wear and tear. You need a separate rewinder. And it was a Corvette. Oh, shit. You know how the Corvette yeah, yeah, rewinder. Yeah, yeah, the red rewinder. And so if I were to put your brain inside of your Corvette rewinder, what is the memory that comes up that is not actually on tape anywhere, but you think of as, oh, this is a core memory that I, Action Bronson, have? <sighs> So I mean, so many. I couldn't tell you those. Those are for me. I can't tell you. The pants it's one's in secret. there, isn't there? Yeah. No, the pants. What pants? There's no, there's no secret of the pants. I don't wear them. <laughs> I just don't think that they're nice. Fashion-wise, I don't like to cover my leg. I work hard to get a calf that Dude, has some sort of diamond shape. I, I, I Why would ashamed. I want to take away from that calf I'm being shown? I like a sock. I like to show the shoe. I like a full, like my sh is like my, my quadricep is literally out, fully flexed. Yes, yes. Quads out. 
It's a quad season. I'm just trying to recover from a sacroiliac injury. It's under your like ass area, like your nut groin, mm. from the back. Like this is this is uh, it's a very specific area. It's like these muscles that keep the hamstring nice. So this is, that's not like the grundle. It's near it. Grundle adjacent. It's it's p parallel to the grundle. Mm. It's running parallel. Yep, yep, yep. It's in a grid. Yep. Almost asymptotic to the grundle. Sort of like always approaching but never touching it. No, it runs congruent. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should point out that your calf philosophy shames me because I consider the Filipino people I'm Filipino. Um, to have excellent calves, I consider my calves excellent. I have artwork about the Filipino calf. This wow. Is this is like a, I, this is not the first time I pointed this out to a guest, but on the left is like a standard, like a uh, white guy, you know, just very vertical calf. On the right is the Filipino calf in my view. And I've been told I should wear more shorts. You do. You have to show that you have to show, you have to condition your shin also. The shin. The shin bone muscle is very important as well. You have to do the front flex, not only the calf. You can't just do front. You got to do back also. So what is a, how do you, how do you, how do you work out your shin? You fle flex your toe upwards. Mm. Do you feel that muscle? I do. Now put it back down. No, no, you don't have to go all the way up. No, no, no. Put your leg down. Your leg down. <laughs> yeah, hey, right there, right there. <laughs> flex your foot. Now really flex it up tight. Oh, yeah, there you it feel is. Feel that muscle? There it is. That one. What is your workout routine like now? I just fucking go hard for an hour and a half. And, you know, I do I do things that I like doing. And then I do things that I hate doing. Give me the thing you love the most. Give me the thing you hate the most. I don't really like bench pressing. It's not really like I don't fucking love that shit. I love to squat. I love to fucking do, like, zercher squats with the weight in front of you. I like picking up stones and sandbags and shit like that. I don't like running. I don't like doing running for long distance. You like the world's strongest man shit. I do, but then I also like like skinny boy shit. I want to be in shape as well. I like the MMA type of cardio training. I like fighting training. I like that type of shit. I like to be pushed to the physical limits. There's a tattoo you have that I believe is... Um, Nothing means anything. So the one that you have... It doesn't mean a f***ing thing. Barry Bonds, his season? It doesn't really mean a thing. Well, I was a stupid kid. This is going back to being an idiot. Why did I do that? He had other seasons where he was juiced up, but that was his most juiced up season. I can't wait to get on GH, honestly. Barry Bonds is... As soon as I turn 40, I'm taking GH. Barry Bonds' 73 home run season. You have that stat line mm -hmm. tattooed on your body. Mm -hmm. And the growth it hormone... It wasn't his most impressive average season. You know that. Well... He hit like 380, right? 375? Barry Bonds hit 370 the year after that. Exactly. That was more impressive. Less he home got runs. walked all the time. Less home runs, but hit 370. Yes, yes. Got walked all the time, was the most feared player in baseball. And by That's the way, how I step to the plate. You put that thing on your fucking elbow arm. guard. When you have that on and you have a dangling earring, who are you to be fucked with? Just about to headbutt a fucking baseball. His head was like his jaw. He had GH face. So the GH face, the yeah. growth hormone. Yeah. Have you taken steroids before? Yeah. 24 years old, I was juiced up. I don't know, I was taking Project Juice. My boy was like, you know, from my, my boy from the neighborhood was getting some juice and we was shooting it up, shooting up juice. Into what part of your body were you shooting Arm, up Project leg, Juice? leg, ass cheek, rear delt. Seriously, bad shit. But who knew where this juice was coming from? Could have been canola oil. <laughs> Could have been whatever, Mazzola. I could have been fucking giving myself goddamn project surgery, you know, like BBLs. Yep, 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 yep. And what would you go do, though, with all of the... I would go fucking do ballet. And ice skate. <laughs> <laughs> we might go fucking lift weights, bro. Meathead shit. 
eat turkey, raw turkey, rolled in me- <laughs> rolled in raw chicken meat, <laughs> and then rolled you're, in provolone. <laughs> Iso Pure, EAS, Bill Romanowski. Yes. You understand? That's the time I was taking creatine at 13 years old. I imagine you now. I imagine young Action Bronson eating a raw f***ing turducken like John Madden. Straight up turducken. I mean, turducken is ridiculous, but I like it. It's, it does seem a little, like, unholy. Well, when it's done right, it's delicious. The idea of just, like, all that, I think it's craziness. That's more for like, seems like it started for a party. That's right. Someone wanted to have a party, so like, it, let's do something festive. I want to explain to people, I think of you as like the ambassador of Queens. So I'm from New York. I grew up on 30th and 1st in Manhattan. Um, friends lived in Queens, all of that. Yeah. Spent way too much time in, like, the Floral Park area growing up. The hell were you doing in Floral Park? My friend Pietro Desario lived in a Floral Park. Flopo. Okay. Um, also Woodside, Filipino food. Oh, yeah. How do you explain Queens to people who have not been there? It's a, it's a mixture of every single life on Earth in one place. So it's kind of like... It's it's a holy land. It is the most diverse place maybe on earth. It's, it is, it is. It's a holy land. I've been a lot of pl- I couldn't see anywhere else being this diverse. I, there's <laughs> that stacked up other places, but it's not with all these different cultures. It's truly unbelievable. Yes. It's truly an unbelievable place. Yes. It's somewhere you never, ever, ever have to leave, and you've already been everywhere. So I feel like a lot of people, the export from Queens that they think they're getting is like Kevin James, King of Queens. When I think of Queens, I think of coming to America. Yes. That's the first thing I think of. And I think that that's a tremendous depiction of Queens. That one, is, you're right. That shows Queens in one of the most incredible lights ever. You got to go to Queens. That's where you're going to meet one of the most incredible. You royalty. Bring it back to ro- Literally Royalty. He got his face on the money, man. You know? (laughs) He's rich. He is rich. What? He got his own money. And baby, when I tell you he's got his own money, I mean the boy has got his own money. Mm. You did it this time. You hit the jackpot. That type of shit. (laughs) Were you on AOL? Hell yeah. What was your screen name? A Suede 56. Mm. How'd you get settled on that? How did I get settled? It didn't take much. <laughs> I just thought of some shit, and that became that. My jersey number was 56 in high school, like a meathead, and that was it. So Ace Suede 56. Yep. At AOL.com. At AOL.com. What? Net Zero. Oh, yeah. The CD. Yep. Yep, I was on Earthlink. Damn. Those are two off-brand ones. Absolutely. I had this kid in my neighborhood who was a computer whiz. He built the computer. And he got me all set up on the on the compact Presario. Oh, yeah, man. And then I got the Dell. I didn't have the good shit. When we had a word processor, I thought we had a computer. <laughs> I would try to enter launch codes, but it never worked. What, what sport did you play, number 56? Football. Position? Bayside High School, center and nose guard. Prestige. Give me the scouting report on you as a player. Uh, de- deceptively quick, hard, hard hitting, long lasting. IQ on f- unbelievable. F- my awareness is a hundred, hundred mm. on Madden. Mm. So I'm like the field general. I'm the quarterback of the line. I know what the I know more than the quarterback does. I question his throws. <laughs> I question his decision making. Why'd you do that? What was the reaction when to? when you are questioning 
was happening on this team. I'm not that type of guy. I would, in my mind, I would, what the f*** was that, you know? <laughs> I could, like, throw him under the bus. On to the next play. Your athletic hero was who? My true athletic hero, I don't really know. Who did I look to is like, wow, Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. He captivated me, as probably many others. Did you ever meet Mike? Yeah. He f kissed me on the hands. I'm sorry. How no, does that work? It's like it's, we kissed each other on hands. It was respect. It just happened. It just happened. I feel like Mike Tyson kissing you on the hand is kind of like... I don't know. It was crazy. That's Diana why I, Ross kissing you on the vocal cord. That's pretty heavy duty, but yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. You like Diana Ross? I was trying to think of spontaneously who was the person who I'd most value you would vocal want cords her to, of. to kiss you on the vocal cord? Yeah, who's the equivalent <laughs> of Mike Tyson? My, it's, that's, that's the SAT problem. Mike Tyson is to hands as blank is to, is to, is, is, okay. is to vocal cords. Mm, let's see. I don't know. F Diana Ross, though, I guess. Celine Dion. Nah. Not really into her. I mean, Stevie Wonder. Now, that's a vocal cord. Absolutely. That's a vocal cord kisser right there. <laughs> <laughs> you, made a, you made a music video, though, in which you... This is like pre deep fake. You edited your face onto the body of Magnus oh, Ver yeah. Magnuson. Yeah. I might not be able to touch my toes, but I will still f these. You take steps to get to the sex. I just flex. Like flex Can you explain Magnus Ver Magnuson for people who don't know the world's strongest man mythology? Yeah, Magnus Ver Magnuson is one of the like one of the top strong men of the world. I think he won three. He's just one of them in this world. Marius Pujanowski. Yes. Yuko Hola won it twice. Magnus won it four times. Excuse Magnus me. won it four. 91, me. 94, 95, 96. Excuse me. But right now I'm in bulk season. I'm back in bulk season. But not too much bulk. Just enough that I, when I come down, I'm shredded. And it's really showing. What does bulking up for, for you look like? Um, this is it. I'm 275 right now. That's it. Can't, this, can't allow myself to get over that. Bringing myself down to 230, I'm going to look like f***ing Jean-Claude Van Damme. He's doing a split between two trucks. Volvos. Volvos. Remember that commercial? Of course. This, is, this doesn't look like I'm f***ing jacked up in this f***ing picture <laughs> see like it's both i'm a little bit better now leaning forward i don't look jacked that's the issue i mean you're wearing a a sweater i'm wearing a dikembe mutombo jersey under this bro are you really I sure am nuggets who else i mean yeah the hawks, hawks. But yeah it is it's one of the greatest jerseys of all time is mutombo nuggets jersey and the mutombo hawks jersey both great i once talked to dikembe mutombo about um his life, and he told me that his house, he had to have special toilets installed because, of course, he's like 7'2", or whatever it is. <laughs> the importance of a good toilet, I was speaking to my colleague yesterday. Mm. You don't really know life until you sit on a warm toilet seat. Bro. You literally sh immediately. And it's like... It's not just a regular sh Everything comes out. You know what I mean? Can I... Can I bond with you, hopefully, about... But you know the toilet, you sit down and it starts spraying something real quick, but you get up, I get up. So it doesn't you, hit me. So you don't like the bidet toilet? I duck toilet. it, I don't, let, I don't let it touch me. Oh, come on. What no, are you no, doing? No. This is the mist prior. Oh, This is the pre-mist. Okay, okay. Because they, I guess they f***ing moisten the area. But this is the pre-mist, I don't let that touch me. But, but under your control... You like a bidet? No. Oh, come on. No, no, what no. What are you doing? I'm old school. I come from a grandma with no paper, just a hand. Just a hand. Can I... <laughs> for the podcast audience, Action <laughs> nah. Bronson... A grandmother doing is, this, is, not me. ...is almost like flipping an imaginary pizza with his right hand. <laughs>
my uh my most disliked version of a toilet is the toilet with the uh, the padded seat. That's old school. I hate it. I mean, that's f- weird when you it deflates as soon as you sit on it. Yes. It's weird. It's like someone asking you to shit into a pillow. Pull over, I'll shit out the window. <laughs> if I need to go, it's happening. But you like a warm seat, but that's about a it. A warm seat is definitely a game changer. Cold, cold floor, warm seat. Yes. Dual. So you get the dual heat. Yep. Cool feet. Shins extended. Oh my God, I mean, I don't know who wears clothes to shit, but I don't. You go full on. Um, no matter where, if I'm in Kmart, Caldor, <laughs> wherever. Caldor? Yeah. Yo, Caldor, man. I don't know if kids respect Caldor the way they need to. I used to take Caldor to the f***ing... To the cleaners. What are you doing inside of a Caldor? Steal anything that's, you know, all the paint. Take all the home products. The rollers. <laughs> Handheld dust busters. The f***ing red... When that red devil came out... Yes. The dirt devil. Yep. That, I, I've had a dust buster in my house. F*** out. I can't even remember when I didn't. Right now, we don't even have a regular vacuum. We have a f***ing handheld dust buster. There's no need. Either the shark or the dust buster. So, you, like, the world of Roombas does not appeal to you. The robots. It actually makes me crazy. When they put the thing on it, I fucking trip over it. It creeps up on you. It does. You'll be cooking up in some bull****. I heard a story once about someone falling asleep on their, on their floor. The Roomba comes out. They have long hair. Now they're being murdered by their, by their vacuum. I mean, listen... All that shit. We saw Terminator 2. This is what they were talking about. You understand? The machines. Skynet. This is what they were speaking of. Arnold told you already this was happening. And this is why when they bring the food with the robot, it freaks me the fuck out. Yep. You know? Yep. Like, I don't want to see that shit. You fucking drop underwear from... And where's it from? Right, drones, like Amazon yeah, drones. Yeah, drop Amazon underwear. You drop the underwear with the plane. Why you dr- I like to imagine you, like, trying to, like, f-ing, uh, throw a discus at those drones. Discus was one of the best sweatshirts brand that ever lived. One of the best athletic brands that I don't know what happened to discus, but, man, Queens, yes. if you had a f-ing discus hoodie or a discus, whatever this one is called... You were the one. I want to ask you about... 12-pack of Sunwear shirts in the trunk. Talha. (laughs) Do you know about these? you know about Talha shirts? No. It's from the white tea days. Made in Bangladesh. So how is a Talha shirt different from, like, the Hanes, you know? Because it's f***ing Talha. Tall tea. Mm. Number six XTs. Mm, Of course. Weren't you doing f***ing new I think they like me dances? (laughs) Laffy Taffy. <laughs> I mean, but this is the M- the NBA, my favorite era of the NBA. Throwbacks. I mean, I don't think I've ever taken a throwback off since they came out. There's no need. Have you heard of this Twitter account called Accidental Bronson? No. I I don't know if you're going to love this or hate this, but would you be okay with me explaining this to you? Sure. So I was sitting at a a New York Liberty game in the second row, right behind courtside, and in front of me was Carmelo Anthony. And I was eating uh, Pocky. You familiar with Pocky? Of course. Which flavor? Matcha. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Good choice. Exactly. A rare, a rare... A rare ver- version of it. Did it come from Japan? Yes. Of course. I'm not f***ing around, man. Rare snacks, man? Rare snacks. Okay. So I'm eating this, this matcha green Pocky behind Carmelo Anthony. And I tweet it out and I just caption it, quietly eating Pocky behind Carmelo Anthony. And a Twitter account, which I did not know about till then, titled Accidental Bronson, retweets it. And I'm like, what the f*** is this? 
Oh, it sounds like a like something I would say. And it's just it all does. of the things that people are tweeting True. inadvertently. And I'm like, that is exactly a thing that f***ing Action Bronson would say. It's true. I mean, to think about it like this, real life is much crazier than anything that you could script. You know? All the bull that you could conjure up in your mind really isn't that cool. If you just assess the situation around you real quick, like, okay, this is what's happening. So you immediately intuitively understood the premise of Accidental Bronson. I get it. Can I, I show it. you some other ones that people have? Sure. I, I feel like... Go ahead, go ahead, go I mean, ahead. I just, Let's hear it. Let's hear I it. I feel like you got to say them, though. Nah, nah, nah. You have to say it. All nah, right. Let me All say right. it. Okay. Let me say it. Let and me then, say and it. And then what you, you can do, Let though, me see it. You can grade it, okay? You can grade it. Let me just... I'm going to expand the window on my laptop. I mean, this is going to be a thing because this is a tribute account to Okay, you. so put me and Timothy Chalamet in the Oklahoma drill and I'm putting him in a hospital. I mean, boom. That's hard. That's fucking hard. It's all about that type of word. Timothy Chalamet? Chalamet? Chalamet. Chalamet. It's a good word. It is. It's a nice name. It, it flows nicely off the tongue. 12 a.m. on the Amalfi Coast watching the Raptors playing preseason in Edmonton. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do some binary because scale of hard because, and not hard. Because there's different depths of description. Yes. Why are they playing in Edmonton? And it's preseason. There's different depths. There's things that add character to it. Absolutely. So yes, Absolutely. For sure. Representative George Santos was charged with theft for stealing puppies from an Amish dairy farmer. That's a dud. <laughs> That's just a news That's story. That's a dud. That was just a news headline. Just spilled an entire box of shallots in the backseat of the Uber. That could be a hook. <laughs> that could definitely be a hook. That's could pretty that good. That's pretty good. It could be a hook. Young Drazen Petrovic with a great pair of Adidas top tens. Eh. It's the photo of a shirtless Young Drazen Petrovic holding take, sneakers. You could just take Young Drazen Petrovic with and then put whatever after. Yep. This is a this is rap class. I I, I am taking notes. Girl, you got the ass of a young Vladi Divac. Hell yeah, <laughs> I f with that hard. Vladi Divac was smoking. That's right. I would probably mention basically. something about that or. Got the ass of a young Vladi Divac. It's heavy. I once mentioned my bitch was thick like John Lovitz. Mm. The critic. It's one of my favorite actors. He's thick. He is. Multiple C's. Ashing a sesame bagel like a cigarette in front of a Roomba. That's just an incredible it is. View. That's a visual right that's there. That's just poetry. Ashing that's, a sesame bagel. I love that that's in a, front that's, of a Roomba. That type of thing that's attached to me, I'm happy about. Lizzo probably be hitting people in the knee with her flute like Tanya Harding. Meh. I actually... <laughs> I just did a show where I was the chief support for Incubus in LA, which I don't know is a... 18,000 people sold out show. It's an incredible sentence. All right, exactly. And Paris Jackson, Michael Jackson, one step away, was in the dressing room next to me. And as we walk out to go do the thing, there's this woman in a tuxedo with a tail. And, you know, she had, like, very shiny shoes on, and she was holding something. And Lizzo was the special guest. So she was in front of Lizzo's dressing room holding the flute for her she had a she had a flute butler white glove flute but flute gut blood white glove flute butler <laughs> that's a hard line also at the bar watching japanese youth baseball absolutely i would word it differently but yes it's hard i'm at the club showing women to monte sabona's dho highlights i know his father yeah of course i would be showing Arvidas. his i'd be showing his father mm that would also be weird. Well, some of those lost tapes, though. Not even on VHS of Arvidas Arvidus. Arvidus. Oh, Arvidus. yeah, being ahead of his time. One of the great pastors of all time. Big men pastors. Not me getting j***ed off at Beetlejuice the Musical. I like the premise of this. Well, that actually happened. To you? To who? <laughs> uh, it was Representative Lauren Boebert, that security video. 
and black Beetlejuice and white. The musical. Yeah, I it's love. Fire. I love that. I am breaking the news to you that Lauren Boebert gave like her date a hand job at through the pants at Beetlejuice the musical in like Colorado. Doesn't count. Yeah, fair. What are we in f- sixth grade? Hand job through the pants. She should f- be ashamed of herself. That was not the takeaway for most people, but I see where you're coming from. Doing lines off a Nintendo Switch in the back of a Hyundai Sonata. Yeah, I mean, I feel like <laughs> they're tapping into things like that I would want to say. We got big men doing cartwheels on our offense. Yeah. yeah. Hard. I saw a fox eating sour cream and cheddar. Nah. I like the idea of this, though. Using animals in alliteration. Yes. Is that the right term where they're speaking as human? Oh, that's anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphizing. Anthropomorphizing. What is alliteration? That's when the words in a row have the same first letter. That was totally off. You had the letter A right. <laughs> that was alliteration or alliteration? Alliteration. What is alliteration? I don't think that's a thing. I bet you it is. Someone Google that. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm getting the f- out of here. I got to go eat, bro. That's it. <laughs> I'm done. Um... Action Bronson, thank you for being thank you, bro. Uh, <laughs> everything I had hoped for. Can I kiss your hand? No, you're not, but you're going to hug okay, me. Okay, very you're good. You're going to hug me hard with a gay little wrist. Oh! Oh! So, what I found out today is why listening to Action Bronson makes me happy. And it's one of the first things I told him, right? Your music makes me feel good. And the reason why, it turns out, is because he embodies this contradiction between this abiding, deep seriousness and also the exact opposite. Often at the same time, Action Bronson loves a high-stakes scenario decorated with low-brow details. He makes music for um, for Don Corleone. If Don Corleone also loved the NBA. He is somebody who makes music to listen to while walking around New York City because New York City is the greatest city in the world that also, at times, is aggressively the opposite, which is why it is worth celebrating. And so here Pablo Torre finds out a New York show that has just introduced Action Bronson to Accidental Bronson, reflecting our capacity individually to spontaneously embody this very contradiction, no matter where you are on this planet. We wanted to send you into your weekend, into your wanderings around wherever you are with just something to, um, to listen to. 12 a.m. on the Amalfi Coast watching the Raptors playing preseason in Edmonton. Young Drazen Petrovich with a great pair of Adidas top tens. Hard. Girl, you got the ass of a young Vladi Divac. Not me getting jacked off at Beetlejuice the musical. We're at the bar watching Japanese youth baseball. We got big men doing cartwheels on our offense. Just spilled an entire box of shallots hard and not hard and not in the backseat of the Uber. Ashy a sesame bagel like a cigarette in front of a Roomba. Yes. And I'm putting him in a hospital. Doing lines off a Nintendo Switch in the back of a Hyundai Sonata. Yeah, it could be a fucking hook. I once mentioned my bitch was thick like John Lovitz. Multiple C's. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I gotta go eat, bro. Hard and not hard. And not hard. <laughs> And on that note, Pablo Torre finds out could not be produced without Michael Antonucci, Ryan Cortez, Sam Daywig, Juan Galindo, Patrick Kim, Neely Lohman, Rachel Miller-Howard, Ethan Schreier, Carl Scott, Matt Sullivan, Chris Tuminello, as well as studio engineering by RG Systems, post-production by NGW Post, our theme song by Jean Bravo, as always. And for now, we're going to go on a walk, but... We'll talk to you soon.
So Johnny Mac to Electric Boogaloo has him picking f***ing cabinet secretaries and diplomats and, and all sorts of jobs that, by the way, kind of essential. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's helping Trump execute his foreign policy. So he's, he's the one, like, calling the Secretary of Defense and saying, no, 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 no. The boss doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to do this. Mm. Trick shot Johnny Mac, the guy who less than a decade earlier was bouncing footballs off the turf into a door to open it from <laughs> 50 yards away, is now, you know, executing American foreign policy. He is now throwing a football off the turf and accessing the nuclear football. Yeah, just clunking it right into Iran. So, 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 the obvious question. Yeah. What experience has he had to justify any of this power? Well, I asked him that. Um, I asked him pretty bluntly, had you ever hired anyone for a job before? No, I had not. So, you're walking into this job. Are you ever like, oh my God, what the hell am I doing? No, I, uh, I had watched this job in my first stint at the White House, and there were a lot of problems with it. And okay. Uh, you know, from my time on the campaign, I knew a lot of people in Trump world and everyone was having an issue with this particular office. And because I was so close to the president or candidate at that time and watching all this happen, I had an understanding of what needed to be done. So I was actually pretty confident that I could do it. it sounds like one person that you hired, Andrew Kloster, I yeah. think his name had a, had a really interesting quote that I gather he shared with you as sort of like a, he said, you can learn policy, you can't learn loyalty. Mm. Does that sort of drive what you were sort of looking for in a lot of ways? Yeah, I think we just needed to be sort of mission aligned. And at the end of the day, if you're competent enough and you're aligned, like we can get a lot done. Um, we might have had the competency with certain appointees, but we didn't have the alignment. And that just doesn't work. This is around the time when the mainstream media, the political press, starts to get interested in Johnny McEntee. There start to become some stories about him. And it's noteworthy that he's not quoted in any of them. He's never on TV. He's, mm. you know, he's not going to get harpooned. Um, but he starts being referred to in the media as Trump's enforcer, uh, even a shadow president. Um, in, in one article I read, he refers to a group of Republicans in the Trump White House, the people he's working with on a daily basis as NPCs, non-player characters. Maybe we should define it just in case you're not familiar with NPCs. But basically what he's saying is they're pro-Trump, but but not really doing anything. Yeah, non-player characters in the role-playing video game yeah. of Trump world. And there's an article in The Atlantic that is literally titled The Architect of January 6th. And this is an article about Johnny McEntee. Yes. And look, I don't, I don't know that that article necessarily makes a persuasive case that anyone other than Donald Trump was the architect of January 6th, but it does give you the sense of just how far this guy has traveled from that athletics center after midnight in 2011 with his knucklehead buddies. But it is noteworthy uh, that in that Atlantic story, he was accused of effectively being the head of, of, a, of a Trump Gestapo, of using Gestapo tactics. And of course, I asked him about that, and he very, you know, quickly and, um, and um, politely and unruffled, you know, brushed off as, oh, that's just a, a, a left-wing attack. How did you feel about, like, in the, in the sort of more mainstream press? Um, they're quoting people in, in, in the office where you're working in as, as describing as, like, the Stasi or the Gestapo. How did you feel about being called that? That doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're there to do a job. If you're super conservative, they're going to attack you. This is one thing I learned in Trump world. Um, it doesn't bother me at all. I think... The more over the target you are, the more incoming you get. Yeah. So we were just doing the best we could. So where was, not to, now I'm deposing you, where was John McEntee <laughs> on January 6th? He says that he had um, left work to pick up some dry cleaning, I believe, and was getting all these texts about uh, some stuff going down over at the Capitol. Yeah, stuff like that. And he... Um, went over to his apartment to, to check it out on, on, on TV. And then, of course, I asked him what he thought. They were walking through the rope and stanchion, so I don't know if I would call them anything other than curious, enthusiastic people that took things too far. The phrase, wow, they're really going for it. Yeah. 